Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and this is a breakdown of the trailer for Trap, the latest big concept thriller from M. Night Shyamalan coming August 9th, starring Josh Hartnett as a father who takes his teen daughter to a pop concert that's being set as a trap by law enforcement to catch a serial killer, and twist in the trailer, the killer is Josh Hartnett. And M. Night Shyamalan's real life daughter, the singer Salika, is the singer Lady Raven in this film. And I kind of feel like Shyamalan made this for dads everywhere who got dragged to Taylor Swift concerts and wanted to kill everyone there. But Trap looks surprisingly fun based off this trailer. So I'm gonna break it down shot by shot for all the details you missed and the second big twist that Shyamalan might have in store based off of some clues that you missed in this trailer. Back when I had roommates, Monopoly nights were a real thing. But now that we're spread out around the city, it's harder to get together, but playing Monopoly Go is super easy. Monopoly Go is everything I loved about Monopoly. Like, yes, you still roll the dice and go around the board, earn Monopoly money, collect rent, but also there's bank heists where you steal Monopoly money from friends and shutdowns where you can target your friend's landmarks just in case you're the troll of your friend group. You can take the Monopoly money you get from destroying and heisting and use it to build up an empire of your own in major cities around the world like New York and London. Honestly though, my personal favorite is building up the monuments in each city. There's something so satisfying about completing a board and then moving on to the next one and seeing all the new stuff I get to build next. Keep in touch with friends, meet other players in the game, or invite them to join your adventure. Just open your friends and family tab to spread the excitement of this gameplay experience. Plus now there's even more to do. Monopoly Go is celebrating celebrating an awesome event called Anniversary Treasures Dig with a series of rewards including special anniversary emojis, tokens, and cheats. Join the mini games where every day you can play, win, and make the most of the moment. Build an empire of your own by clicking the link in the description or by scanning the QR code and downloading Monopoly Go for free now. Okay, so this film will be set mostly at a concert for fictional pop singer Lady Raven, a pop singer in the vein of Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift, Rihanna, Beyonce, at this venue that, according to signs, is named Tanaka Arena, but they shot this at the first Ontario Center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. But the fact that her name is Lady Raven could be a nod to Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, a poem about a man driven mad by a raven who keeps squawking, Nevermore! The songs of Lady Raven, played by Salika Shyamalan, seem to be designed to haunt Hartnett's character. When Cooper and his daughter Riley park in the parking lot, the overpass above has a road sign for US-1, the Philadelphia Trenton exit. Shyamalan sets most of his films in the Philadelphia area, and Cooper pulls a dad joke here to stop and tie his shoes when Riley's just desperate to get into the arena. And I think we should remember this detail because a victim fleeing from him in the past may have tripped from an untied shoe. Signs hanging inside the arena show Lady Raven's tour stops. Seattle, San Jose, Oakland, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Boston, Brooklyn, Nashville, Atlanta, Kansas City, New Orleans, Phoenix, and Chicago, Detroit, and with the final show in Toronto. And it is the Source of the Bleeding Tour 2024, which feels like it's also got to be a clue designed to reflect Cooper's butchery, right? I'll explain at the end of this video how all of these concert clues could be pointed to Shyamalan's bigger twist of this film. But Cooper got them both floor seats, and in this overhead shot of them eating pretzels, the huh? twist? Pretzels? Pretzel twist? No, you can see that they're both wearing friendship bracelets. So obviously Shyamalan pulled a lot of details from the Taylor Swift era's tour. Lady Raven's posters include Raven Raven imagery and now her backup dancers costumes look Raven inspired and I cannot help but think of Moira Rose's horror movie The Crows of Eyes 3, The Crow and Eve in Schitt's Creek. Cooper heads to the bathroom and notices the police presence. New security cameras being put in, police by the door, armored trucks outside, and he asks the merch stand guy, Jamie, about these. Cooper, Jamie, what's with all the police trucks outside? The camera's everywhere, Jamie. I'm not supposed to tell. Yeah, notice how Cooper repeats Jamie's name at the end of his question in a way that feels just a bit unnatural and forced, but it's hard to know if this is like the red flag of a sociopath or if it's the sometimes awkward dialogue that Shyamalan writes into his scripts. Like he does shoot Cooper and Jamie so that they are centered directly in frame looking directly into the lens, which is the type of framing that you see in comedic setups or horror situations that are designed to unnerve you. As the police trucks plow in over the bridge, Shyamalan snuck in an Easter egg for the film The Watchers in theaters June 14th. The Watchers is another Warner Brothers horror film directed by Ishana Knight Shyamalan, M. Night Shyamalan's daughter and Salika's sister, produced by Shyamalan's production company, Blinding Edge Pictures. So I like that this is such a family film. Like my daughters are helping me make this, but also go support my daughter's work. So the merch guy Jamie spills the beans to Cooper. You need a butcher, a freaking nut job that goes around just chopping people up. Well, the feds or whatever heard that he's gonna be here today, so they set up a trap for him. And right when we cut back to Cooper, after.
after the mention of The Butcher, a darkness fills Hartnett's eyes. And I gotta say, I'm loving Josh Hartnett's career resurgence, which really just seems to be after his appearance in Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer last year. Even M. Night Shyamalan admitted that's how Hartnett got on his radar. Now, how would the feds know that their mystery killer would be at a concert without knowing any other biographical details about him to be able to arrest him before he enters that arena? Maybe he used the same credit card or the same account to buy these tickets as their killer using some other purchase. I don't know, to get tickets to the Eras Tour, you had to create like a fan account and tell them pretty much everything about you. Who knows? Or maybe he stole these tickets from one of his past victims and when they found the body, they realized that this person was a huge Lady Raven fan and posted selfies on Instagram showing that they had tickets to it. But then when they looked for the tickets, the tickets were missing and the only one who could have stolen them was the butcher. But there is a third way that they could have tracked down the butcher that I'll get to a little bit later. But here the trailer transitions tonally as Lady Raven now plays piano on a different set, perhaps inspired by the Evermore section of the era store when Taylor Swift played from a moss covered piano. Later, Lady Raven wears a wedding dress with a green vine and rose display covering her microphone stand that also might have been inspired by that. But this house set has a watercolor backdrop and maybe this set reflects a house that Cooper used to imprison his victims. Like I assume the house where he keeps his victim is not the same house where Riley lives with him because she would have heard the victim screaming from the basement. Like obviously everything in this concert is some kind of reflection that's meant to show what's going on inside Cooper's mind and in his history. Because the shift in the music is signaling our discovery of the truth about Cooper that he is the butcher, the one that they're trying to catch in this trap. In the bathroom stall, he checks his phone security camera to see a victim chained up to a laundry machine in the basement and the lights go red on his face as the trailer cuts back to Cooper on the concert floor, the red stage lights on his face. So it's kind of like this trailer is making it seem like Cooper's consciousness is just kind of drifting in and out of different parts of this arena. But the bathroom having bright red stalls reminds me of the bathroom by the ballroom in The Shining, the bathroom where Grady tells Jack that he's always been the caretaker here. Kubrick using an unusual bright red bathroom set is really remembered as a choice to alarm the viewer and match the red blood that gushes out of the elevators of the Overlook Hotel. While Cooper disassociates, his eye twitches and there's a quick insert of his hand picking up a butcher knife from a kitchen table. On his hand, you see he's wearing the friendship bracelet, so you know this is him, but he's also wearing a wedding ring. So the fact that it's just him taking Riley to the concert alone is interesting, right? Like, I assume he's not divorced. He's wearing a wedding ring. He may be wearing this ring because his wife is dead. In fact, maybe she was his first kill. And the background of this butcher's knife shot, there's someone else standing across the table from him wearing a light blue jacket. And I have an idea on who that might be. I'll get to that later though. In a song where attendees hold up their smartphone flashlights, Cooper looks up to the balcony level to see another guy detained by police. Maybe they scan the crowds for just dudes who are there by themselves. And so if you think about it, having Riley there next to him would be kind of Cooper's shield. Cause there'd be a lot of dads who were just kind of dragged there by their daughters and their friends. And they might not know that this butcher has a daughter. Now I could be wrong, but in the first row of the balcony of the shot, the woman on the end of the row kind of looks like Ishana Knight Shyamalan, Salika's sister and M. Night Shyamalan's other daughter who's directing The Watchers. Like if both films are family productions and assuming they shot these concerts over just a few days, it makes sense that Ishana would attend one of the days to watch her sister perform. There's a quick shot of Cooper walking without Riley, but notice there's a police radio in his ear. So this is how he's trying to stay a step ahead of the police. He must have stolen this from a cop to stay aware of their movements. And we did see Jason Bourne do this in the Bourne identity when he was trying to escape a building. And right as Cooper hugs Riley, text reads, in the world of M. Night Shyamalan, which we just have to at least interpret as a declaration that the events of this movie, Trap, are set in the same universe as other M. Night Shyamalan films. Shyamalan pulled this move before with 2017 Split, ending by revealing this seemingly standalone psychological horror film with James McAvoy as a killer with dissociative identity disorder. All these events actually took place in the same universe as the events of the 2000 Unbreakable film, setting up the somewhat disappointing 2019 team-up movie, Glass. So how could Trap be connected to anything else? Will we learn that Cooper is actually incarcerated alongside Kevin Crumb from Split and Glass? Will Shyamalan connect these events to the weird mythology that he began to establish in Glass, the 10,000 year old secret society of the Clover organization tasked with suppressing and pacifying super beings before they're discovered by humanity? That was established in the movie Glass. It is very weird. I doubt this movie will tie in David Dunn as the overseer who might like catch Cooper by grazing hands with him because for the past few years, Bruce Willis has taken a step back from acting after being diagnosed with dementia. And I don't think we really need to see him in movies anymore. He's made enough great movies for us and I just want him to live his life and enjoy himself with his family. But here's a pitch. Maybe M. Night Shyamalan is gonna bring back Haley Joel Osment because we know he's an adult actor. He appeared in The Boys and we could see an adult Cole Sear as a ghost whisperer working for the FBI, talking to dead people to help find their killers. Like think about it, the scene with ghost Misha Barton at the wake for this girl who was poisoned by Munchausen by proxy. Criminal investigation totally seemed to be the path that Cole was on at the end of that movie. And as we're saying this out loud, I 
kind of think that's something Shyamalan might do in this movie, Trap. But we see the word Trap closing in on a creepy smiling face of Cooper as he is superimposed over these other quick flashes of other shots. We see Cooper pushing through SWAT agents, and then this woman rolling down a flight of stairs in the arena, and it kind of looks like Cooper pushed her. And then there's some commotion at the concession stand where employees turn around in fear while Cooper seems to duck away. And then armored police swarming a different location that looks like a department store. Because you see mannequins and tables with folded clothes. And in this department store, a very creepy shot that you only see if you pause very quickly. A man hanging to the left of a mannequin with a pair of scissors in his hand. His arm is also raised, kind of looks like a marionette. And when you go through it frame by frame, he seems to be moving. So I'm not sure he's dead yet. Maybe he was an attempted victim. And this could have been the butcher's last witness and how they were able to get some additional evidence on the butcher. But then following this group of cops in the department store, you'll notice is a female detective. And this character shows up two shots later looking in through the arena windows from the outside. We actually saw her with the police earlier when she's turned away from camera. This is Haley Mills' character. And I'm pretty surprised to see Haley Mills in this movie because decades ago, she played the twins in the original 1961 Parent Trap for Disney and was the star of Good Morning Miss Bliss, the sitcom that spun off Saved by the Bell. And she's since shown up in some other supporting roles in recent years. She had a brief role in The Wheels of Time, but I assume she is the lead investigator, the one who's been following the butcher from case to case. And look closely at what she's wearing. It's all tinted red, but I think that is a blue coat and it kind of looks like it has the same trim and color as the coat worn by the person in the background of that butcher knife shot that we saw before. So she might have some kind of personal connection to the butcher. And the superimposition makes it kind of hard to make out. But in one of these shots, Cooper seems to be holding a body, maybe another victim whose body is trying to hide in the arena. But the trailer ends with Jamie and Cooper. Be kind of dope, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Cooper's laugh just lasts a little too long. So structurally, the twist that Cooper, the protagonist, is the sadistic serial killer who's being trapped is like the twist that Cole's psychological condition is that he has the actual ability to see dead people. It's a twist, yes, but it's also the premise of the movie that you put in the trailer. So it suggests that there in this movie will be a second twist coming that recontextualizes the whole film. So my pitch of a ghost whispering FBI consultant crime hunter adult Haley Joel Osment could be one idea of a twist. But I also wonder if we might learn that this entire concert is, like the Overlook Hotel to Jack and the Shining, more of a mental prison where he's haunted by this Edgar Allan Poe raven figure. And like in Shutter Island, investigators are talking to this patient, trying to figure out why this madman did what he did. And that everything inside the concert arena is kind of like an extended metaphor. Like maybe he lost his mind when he lost his daughter in some accident. So in his mind, he's trying to take his daughter on the concert that he never was able to take her on. And the tour dates could refer to the stops of his killing spree, or maybe where he buried his bodies. I'm sure you could imagine all types of scenarios where this could all line up, right? And I just want to say, M. Night Shyamalan's record is mixed. We know that. The guy made The Sixth Sense, Unbreakable Signs, and Split, but he's also the same guy who made Lady in the Water and The Happening, the 2010 Avatar The Last Airbender film, After Earth, and Glass. But the guy keeps working, writing the script for the movie Devil. He made The Visit and Old, Knock at the Cabin. And how is he able to keep working? Well, M. Night Shyamalan is perhaps the most efficient director at producing major films with really small budgets, which he often finances himself just because he loves making movies and he partners with great actors. His movies have strong marketing hooks, often one word titles that have some kind of cryptic mystery to them that look great on movie posters. And they always, always attract thriller audiences looking to figure out what the mystery is. And he saves money by setting his stories mostly in one location and he gets big tax breaks. And now he's getting his family to pitch in and you have to admire his success. Like the visit costs $5 million to make and it made $96 million. Split costs cost $9 million to make, and it made $278 million. Last cost $20 million to make, and made $247 million. And Old cost $18 million to make, and made $90 million. That represents a massive return on investment. And honestly, it's how studio films used to be made in the 80s and in the 90s, given modest budgets with some decent box office. Movies didn't have to make $300 million to be profitable. And probably what's most respectable about it is M. Night Shyamalan is making most of these as original concept movies. Yes, not the cabin and avatar were based on properties but most of these other titles were just like ideas he came up with and he releases his movies in theaters he does not do the whole streaming game and this is just very rare in hollywood these days so while sometimes m night Shyamalan's twists are hokey his story logic makes no sense and his dialogue can be rough i will always give his films a shot and trap looks fun i'm gonna check it out comment down below with your thoughts on this trailer you can follow me at ea boss subscribe to all three channels of the new rock stars network for breakdowns and news coverage of everything you love thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye Thank you.